we have uh, a number of different pest species in New Zealand, and so biosecurity is really quite an important issue. And that's uh, what, what we mean by biosecurity, is trying to stop one species of animal from perhaps expanding and arriving in new places where it shouldn't be, particularly when we have a number of islands around New Zealand. So um, we take these uh, species, for example, and rats is a quite a common one. They can swim around to islands and arrive at places that they shouldn't be, and we need to detect them when they arrive, and we need a, a cost-efficient way to do this. So uh, a number of people in New Zealand have developed this thing called a tracking tunnel, and so with a, a tracking tunnel, we have a card inside and we bait the card and the animals will move over the, the blue ink and uh, to eat the bait. And then once they've eaten the, the bait, they'll move out and they leave these tracks. And so on this card here, there's two different tracks, quite interesting. One of them is a rodent species and the other one is a uh, lizard species. But unfortunately, even though uh, a well-trained person in biology could look at these, we don't know much more than the fact that this is a rat of some type and this is a skink or a gecko of some type. So we needed to find a better way of identifying these. And obviously, every species has a different form of morphology. Pattern recognition is a really exciting field at the moment because you see programs like CSI where they, they do things like they have oh, a small piece of uh, data and yet they can immediately put it in some database on the television and scan through thousands of possibilities and within real time get a, an answer immediately. And so we wondered if there was an ecological context for this where we have these species that we have trouble identifying because they look so similar, but we, that we could use this pattern recognition technology to uh, isolate uh, more greater scale and uh, preciseness than humans were able to do. Reinhardt and his team needed uh, a database of cards so that they could go, well, we know a priori that this species is this uh, rat and this track here belongs to this rat and this track belongs to another one. So we could ground truth the data we were collecting by going to an island with only one species. So we knew that every, all of the 30 cards we collected say they would all have this one species of rat track. So I then collected these with some colleagues from islands around New Zealand and brought these into the laboratory and that was where we could start going through the, uh, the testing method so that instead of uh, going out there when we didn't know what species there are, which is how the method would really be used, we would start by testing it and going, we know what this should be, how good is the method at testing it. We have this uh, track of the red on the card, and uh, now we start to develop uh, geometric algorithms models to approximate the individual prints of toes and the individual footprint. It might be good to approximate the toe by an ellipse or by a polygon to identify the center of gravity of, of the individual pattern and to have all these centers uh, connected to one pattern. Or maybe we should uh, have a more global view on the areas and uh, to find out the area which is covered by the print and how the different areas of individual footprints are related to one another. Here we have a particular task where individual patterns, uh, the individual toe, is forming a, a pattern of one foot, and then all the prints of the, uh, all the feet form a track. So you have a hierarchy of patterns. So you have to understand at the base level the individual toe print, and then what is a foot, what is a track, and finally, from all that information, you have to extract the hypothesis what kind of animal was actually there. So here we have one example where I would say, okay, borderline. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, there's definitely a lot of dirt and um, also artifacts on the card. You but can see but the still animal was actually sliding on the, yeah. the wet ink there, leaving many smudges. Yeah. And in comparison between these two, we see that the footprints here are much larger. But what we need to know is whether the largeness is just because it was a, a larger individual of the same species, or whether it was perhaps a different species which is naturally larger. And so that's when we start to analyse things, such as, uh, as Reinhard uh, shown us, that we have the, the micro scale, so looking at which one is the central footprint and which ones are the toes. And then once you've identified those, we move to the scale of how far apart are these footprints from one another, which can be measured in terms of distance from the front to the back leg or distance between the, uh, the two back legs. And these are just all different statistical summary parameters that we can use to identify uh, the uniqueness of this footprint to that species.
the real-time component is particularly oh. important in this because, for example, you might be working on Campbell Island, which is uh, uh, two days south of New Zealand by boat, and so it takes a long time to get there, and yet they discover something in a tracking card and they want to be able to react to that immediately. It doesn't have to be a rat, it could be any species. There's a, these are very valuable islands in the south of New Zealand. And uh, you could have insects turning up there or any number of species. And so if they can scan that and send it away and have it analysed in real time rather than having to wait for weeks before they are able to react to this incursion, this new arrival, then uh, that will be really important. An interesting point from this is we'd like to expand the scale of it to biosecurity of new species arriving, but of course when a new species arrives you've never seen it before so you don't have a reference database. But in that case we just need to have the power in the system to go, I don't recognize this, it doesn't match anything we've seen before, so it flags it as a question mark and immediately this can move to something like customs responding to it and investigating in, in more depth what's happening in that cargo container for example. Fingerprinting technology and recognition is not a new field, it's been around for uh, probably a century now, but uh, our novel application was in terms of looking at these species where they don't have any of the patterns that we're used to analysing before. So for example, a, a rat has four feet and they consist of multiple pads and multiple toes, so it's very different to a human uh, footprint or handprint. And then when you start working with insects, you're working on a whole different uh, planet really where they have multiple dots and they have different triangulations and so nobody's ever looked at the geometric patterns in, the, in these and so we really wanted to see are there predictable patterns that we can use to differentiate species or perhaps later even start differentiating sexes of the animals that are walking over these cards.